Welcome back to SFC Live, where we're going to try and discuss as much as we can from the action we've just seen there. Sunderland drawing 2-2 with Fleetwood Town down at the Highbury Stadium. It was a, a game full of incidents in the end then, Danny, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I think first half, looking back at it, I thought we were good. Controlled the majority of that first half. Fleetwood offered very little other than that one breakaway chance they got, uh, where Hoffman done well to, to smother it. But, um, yeah, when you get yourself 2-0 in front, we're top of the league, we're confident. Um, you're thinking with 14 minutes, 15 minutes to go, let's see the game through now. Let's let's be big, let's be strong, let's be organised, let's look after the ball. And we didn't really manage to do that, if we're honest. Um, yeah, they, they came back into the game by chucking a few balls on top of us. Obviously, we dropped deep, as, as we've seen in recent weeks, but we've managed to hold on. Um, but we haven't managed to do that today, I thought. When they changed it up, they put Morton out on this left-hand side. He cut in a couple of times. And definitely had an impact in the second he did, half, yeah. didn't he? He got, the, got the, the first goal for them, didn't he? Coming in off that left-hand side. Um, and then we're thinking, can we see this game through now? Like, let's be big. Let's help the goalkeeper out. And, and we, I thought we did all right. We won the majority of those balls coming in. He brought Alves on with a couple of minutes to go. He won a couple of headers. But it was that last one, wasn't it? It was the first one that done the damage. It was a big... A big diagonal, I think Danny Andrews hit it. We haven't got the first one, it's a knockdown. We'll have to have a look at it back. Well, we will um, do in a second. In fact, should we start looking back through the yeah, highlights then, Danny? Let's, let's start looking through back through the, the action from the game then. And this is this is the game, all the, you know, we'll start in the first half where something looked good in the first we, half, didn't we? We did, yeah. Th th that was where we were getting a lot of joy, wasn't it? Whether it was Winchester and Gooch or, or Sirkin was, was doubling up on, with McGeady. And then this was their only real effort. That's not a great effort. He got himself in, wrong side of Callum Doyle. Keeper makes a, a half decent save, parries it, and then I manages to clear it. And then this one, although it's, it, you see the ref gives the foul, but it's a great save, tipping it from uh, from that top right corner. Um, other than that, that's that's all they offered in that first half. A few long throws. Here's here's the first goal. Oh, great ball in from Embleton. Good bit of movement from Ross Stewart. Gets across the near post, glances it in, gets his fifth goal of the season. Sets us on our way. We'll have another look at it back. I think if you look in the middle. He, Clever little bit of movement from Ross. He starts offside, takes two yards to his right-hand side, I think gets himself back onside when, when Embleton strikes the ball and then glances it past Cairns. And then, like I say, McGeady again driving in. They're not too sure to come out to him. Whose job is it? You've got the centre midfielder there. Rossiter, who's come out of his slot. The, the centre-half doesn't fancy coming and engaging. And unfortunately, uh, Aidan just fires it over the crossbar. Good little bit of skill from Sirkin here. Feeds it down the line to Embleton, who's made a run from that central area and fires a, a ball across, and you see there Gooch has come in to try and get on the end of it, Stewart's in there, but just that yard of pace on it that does the both of them in the middle. But we were getting in, that's, that's where we were getting all of our joy, and we seem to come away from it second half. Again, that was a, a worrying sign for us, what we've seen already in previous games where set plays are coming in, wide free kicks especially, and we're not locking on to men. Um, Dan Neal on this one, comes back to him from McGeady, just cuts across it, doesn't he, 20 maybe 23, 24 yards out there, Dan Neal. Aidan McGeady here, does well in the corner, gets a yard, fires the ball across, and you look in there, is anybody on the move? Everyone's almost set, really, in the middle, wait for a, maybe a, a ball to come in with a bit of height on it. Um, this, is the, this is the penalty shout against Bailey Wright, I don't think it is. He's, he's come out to, to close it down, he's, he's, what, eight yards away, maybe, from his man, his, his hands are tucked into his, to his body, and I don't think it's a penalty. This one, he doesn't sort his feet out, but then Morton makes a mess of it as well. He controls it with his left, bounces off his knee. Uh, switch of play, good switch there. Winchester, this is, a, this is a hell of a ball. This is across that line. You see Ross there, trying to get in there. He's, he's making up the ground, but he goes near post, and by the time he gets there, the ball's already been fizzed across. And we've seen in that first half, maybe eight or nine, maybe ten balls coming in from wide areas. Uh, can we question the numbers getting in the box? Maybe, maybe so, but we, we got a goal from, from a ball coming in. And then second half, we never took control of the half throughout the 45 minutes, I, I didn't think. Uh, one or two errors coming into the game. It's like, Mc, McGeady does well here, doesn't he? I think that was a good save, save from Cairns. In fact, Cairns made a good couple of saves he in did, the second yeah, half. Yeah, he did. One from Lyndon Gooch, which we'll, we'll see as well. That's it. Winchester gets forward well here. Does he pull this one back edge of the box? Yeah, as it comes to Embleton, he gets the strike rate, gets blocked. So we, although we weren't great in terms of dominating the half, we were having those opportunities on the counter. Here's Morton here, he skips, skips inside two or three. And I think as it comes, I'm sure it's a, is it Lyndon Gooch that comes across and makes a, makes a tackle. But I, I, st I still f felt we were comfortable. He does well here, Winchester. He gets himself in a bad position in the first place. Uh, Morton off the back of him. You see 
Winchester has to spin his body around, which was never good for a fullback when you have to do that. But he makes a great recovering challenge. Morton just has a heavy touch and he, and he makes a great tackle. And that one there from, from Lyndon Gooch, as you said there, Ken's made one or two good saves in this second half. And he's down well to his left to, to turn it behind for the corner. I think this is the penalty. Now, I've seen Luke 09 there. I think, I think the refs give that against him, although Luke 09 gets contact on the header. You see Luke's appealing. He feels he's got hold of his shirt. He's not really appealed it too much, the man who's up against him. I think it was at Hill, maybe. But, uh, yeah, McGeady steps up. Keeper goes the right way. Cairns can't get, his, can't get a strong hand on it, and it creeps underneath him. That puts us 2-0 up, and I'm thinking, let's, let's see the game out now. You know, these haven't been great. I haven't offered a little. Um, ball in there from Danny Andrew. Hoffman comes, gets a glove on it. And just that last 10 minutes, they started chucking, chucking balls in the box. They had to. They were, they were a goal down. They put a few few bodies on, there it is there, you see Bailey Wright's come out of his slot, I'm sure if we can have a look at it slow down again in a minute um, or we'll look back at it in detail after, um, Winchester he's got to be alert of where Morton is he comes across him and gets, uh, gets them back in the game and that one's a great save isn't it, it's Morton again well. free header it's, it's maybe I say, am I doing him a disservice but it, it is straight at Hoffman, it's come at him with pace so he has to parry it away and here's the goal now and difficult to see I think Bailey Wright he looks astonished with the yeah, decision that's gone disbelief. against him but yeah, you know it's, 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 it's so a difficult so you think it was given see. for the shirt pull on shirt pull Morton against, I'm thinking it, I can only say it's given against Bailey Wright for the shirt pull on is it Morton in the middle I'm not sure but um, they didn't look a lot in it is what I'd say I think I wonder if we could see it again, the, the penalty decision, because that's going to be the biggest talking point from the game. And he's, he, he's goal side as well, Bailey Wright. You see, it's this, this first one. We don't get to We don't win that one. It's the knockdown there. And that's... Well, yeah, Morton's nowhere near getting the, the ball, back. was he? he? He's never getting there because Bailey Wright's actually in a good position. Um, he's, you see, Bailey, watch Bailey Wright's position now. He's always, always goal side. Always goal side of him there, I feel. And... Yeah, you look at the boys there, the reactions, they're not happy. Just have a look at it once more. He's the only one really in the box, right isn't there. he? Yeah, he, he does. He, he's got a bit of his shirt at the back there. Um, it's a half appeal, I think. You know, there's a couple of others then join in. But that happens at every, yeah, getting every time around the ball's him. in the box, isn't it? It's, kind if, of he, if he got wrong side for me, if he's wrong side of Bailey Wright, if, he, if he's a yard from goal, he's going to toe poke it home, then I'm saying, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a better. But he, he's never goal side of Bailey Wright. And Bailey has got a little bit of his shirt. But as you say, Frankie, you always have that contact. You're always, as a centre off, you're always looking at feeling for your man. Um, and I think it is a cheap one, but they'll probably argue at the, at the other end it's a cheap one. What he gives against Luke 09 for the shirt pull there, so it's it's disappointing. You yeah. know, 95 minutes on the clock. We're literally looking at the clock there and the countdown, and you think that's the final whistle there. If that ball bounces, Hoffman catches it, and he doesn't give the penalty, then that's that's the game done, isn't it? But he does, and it's disappointment. It's a bitter blow at the end of a game when you're, you're getting back on the bus with, with three points and now it's only one. Yeah, don't forget you can have your say in the post-game programme very, very soon. Use the hashtag AskDanny if you want to be involved on social media here on the post-game programme of SAFC Live. Uh, we'll bring you all the scores as well from the rest of the games in around EFL League One very, very soon as well. And, of course, that all-important league table. But, Danny, looking for the positives between the Sunderland side. Yeah. It was Luke O'Neill who caught you either this afternoon. Yeah, I give, I give man of the match to Luke today. I thought, um, you know, people all associate him being in there now with his combative side. He's in there ball winning. You know, he's in there putting tackles in. But I just thought he sprayed the ball around, especially well first half as well. Um, I think we're going to show his yellow card, actually, <laughs> first up now, which isn't a great start. But... I don't think he needed to make that. We've missed a lot of his good clips there from the first half There's where so he was, he was, there, he was dictating the play in there. You know, we, I said we were a 3v3 in there, you know, two and a one and a one and two, all, you know, up against their players in the middle of the park. But he got hold of the ball. He sprayed it out well to this left-hand side. Um, he made, made a couple of good tackles in there. There was balls coming in, in and see one there, just putting his toe in when he needs to. The balls were dropping. You know, there's a bit of head tennis, as you mentioned, going in and around there. And he was just winning balls in the, in the middle of the pitch. You see, just ticking us over. He played a couple of good passes, played a good one out to Sirkin on the left-hand side, further up the pitch. Um, and then, obviously, he was involved in winning the penalty for us as well. So, I think, as well, touch on others. There was Winchester, I thought, again, who'd who done well getting forward when he could. Uh, McGeady was involved as well, going forward with a lot of good play, balls going into the box. So, I, I, yeah, I went for, for Luke 09 as well today, and he's... Just his yellow card aside, I think that was the only downside. He didn't really need to make that 
make that challenge. I didn't feel it was out on the touchline. Could have let him run. I think Dan Neal was out there doubling up with him. Um, so he, he could perhaps, you know, avoided that yellow, cheap yellow card, really. But, you know, I thought he'd done well in there today, Luke 09. OK, Danny. Let's have a look at the latest scores from in and around EFL League One this afternoon. And this is how it's ended. Accrington 1, Wigan 4. AFC Wimbledon nil, Plymouth 1. Bolton nil, Rotherham 2. Cheltenham 1, Oxford United nil. Crew 2, Burton nil. Doncaster 1, Morecambe nil. Gillingham 1, MK Dons 4. Lincoln nil, Ipswich 1. Portsmouth 1, Cambridge United 2. Sheffield Wednesday 1, Shrewsbury 1. Wickham 2, Charlton 1. Let's see what that does to the EFL league table. And Wigan are top uh, on the same points as Sunderland, we must stress. Yeah, goal difference there, the 4 1 win, wasn't it? So they've uh, no, they've re reacted well to the opening day defeat up at the Stadium of Light, and fair play to them, they've gone on a good run and top of the pile this evening. But it was a strange one looking at a lot of those results there. I think the teams who have been doing well, Bolton, I think they lost, didn't they? There, Rotherham were struggling, I think. Uh, Burton, I think, got beat. Um, Portsmouth at home to, to Cambridge, so. A lot of what we call coupon busters on the on the results table there today, but no, we're still we're still up there. Again, people are keep saying it's it's early doors, and it is. But we've got to uh, bounce back again now. Um, disappointing as it is, we play Wigan as well on on Tuesday night, don't we, in the League Cup? So uh, that'll be. Good. I'd imagine a lot of changes for both teams. You know, a lot of lads for ourselves who need some game time, and um, I'm sure they'll make some changes as well. But disappointing. Yeah. You know, we're two 0 up as we say. There, 15 minutes left on the clock getting back on the bus, there'll be a lot of lads heads down, getting back on the bus there, but got to react, get back to it on Monday morning, get ready to go again on Tuesday night. Okay, Danny, let's have a look at your questions now and your topics of debate in hashtag Ask Danny. First one comes in from Glenn, it says, uh, feels like a loss, uh, of course, but in context of the way we're playing, we still look much better than previous seasons. And to be fair, you said the first 45, we look really good. Yeah, no, I agree with Glenn. I think um, throughout the, what, seven games, including the League Cup as well, um, we look like we can cut teams open this season. I think last season it was, the build-up was quite pedestrian. It was slow. Teams of, of, uh, often got their shape, got bodies back in, got organised, and we had to find it difficult to break them down. But this season, uh, we've played through the lines. Um, we're getting balls into good areas early on. Balls are going into the box. Ross Stewart's making those runs in behind where... Even looking at the game last week, we, we looked at the highlights before. Um, time and time again, we're just those threaded balls where we're getting 1v1 against defenders easily this season, where perhaps that was the difference in last season. And Yeah, as he's mentioned there, it's disappointing there that we've, we've lost the game, but still looking at it, I thought first half especially, not so much second half. There was a lot of good play. We controlled the game. Um, wide areas, I thought we'd we done well. It was just that end product, really. Um, first half especially, we didn't really work cares. So yeah, we got the, got the goal from the wide free kick. Didn't really work him enough. A couple of great balls flashed across. Winchester put one across. Um, I think McGeady put one across there, didn't he? But we didn't get on the end of it. And we keep saying it, well, you're at 1-0 the team. You fancy the opposition are going to get a spell in the game. And then they came out second half and they, and they did have a little bit of control, I felt, Fleetwood, um, without really hurting us. But then we go and get the, the second goal, don't we, from the, from the penalty. And then you're thinking, that's it now, lads. Manage the game. I think that'll be what Lee Johnson is saying to the boys in there. We've got to manage the game better than what we did spend you know five ten minutes on the ball we've got lads out there who are more than capable of of keeping the ball it's a drill you do in training time and time again you have a big area whether it's a half pitch uh, it might be a nine v nine and you, you you play keep ball you know you take the goals out of your mind it's keeping the ball and it's frustration i've been you know i've been on the team where you haven't got the ball and you're chasing around and the opposition are getting 10 15 passes in you become frustrated and that's what we need to do better for me um, if we can control the ball there get 20 30 passes in take this thing out of the game, we're tuning up, we've got a great following there, as I said, the old lays are going to come out in that, and it drains the opposition, um, you know, their heads would have gone down, we didn't manage to do that, we, we turned the ball over cheap again, I felt at times, and let them in, Morton gets that goal, and their tails are up, a few balls coming in, you think we've seen it over the line, but we didn't manage to do it today. Okay, let's move on to the next one, this one is for Mac, who says, another good match, uh, of it for in McGeady, watching him is pure pleasure. His dribbles and passes are great. Um, well, I will be in England next week and we'll be watching a Sunderland game at the State of My Life for the first time in my life. I look forward to it. Well, thank you so much, Mac. And of course, I'm sure all the Sunderland faithful will give you a warm welcome 
wherever you are traveling from. It's just an example of the size of the club, isn't it? There's not many you know, teams in League One of people traveling yeah, from all Yeah, fans abroad coming in. Yeah, and here's it's uh, Bolton at home as well next week, so it should be a, should be a good game. I think they a lot of goals in their game. So, um, but no, he's right. I think Aiden was one of his better performances today. Certainly, he's seen a lot of the ball um, out on this left-hand side first half. We've seen the effort he had first first half as well, didn't he, where he drove into the box. Defenders are scared to commit, especially as a defender. I know and I've been there. As soon as you know, you, you have a little look down, you see them white lines, and once you're, you know, a man's driving you back into the box, and certainly someone like Aidan McGeady with his quick feet, you don't want to commit, and you're giving him them yards, but at some stage you have to almost go and square him up, uh, and they never, and unfortunately, just, just fired it over the crossbar, didn't he? But I thought he, he put some good balls into the box today. Um, he was always willing. He wanted to get on the, on the, on the ball. Um, second half as well, great save by Cairns. That one in the top right corner, wasn't it, Which, when he got the shot away? So it was an encouraging performance from Aidan today and uh, a lot of confidence for him getting back to it. We always know with Aidan, and I know fans have questioned him so far this season, that has he not been at his best so far? And perhaps he hasn't. But at the same time, I think we haven't had to rely on him as much as last season. We've got Dan Neal, Elliot Embleton, Lyndon Gooch, Ross Stewart makes a difference, uh, a different style of play. It's not a case of let's get the ball out to Aidan McGeady and let's hope he can make something happen. We've had different avenues to break teams down so far this year. So we haven't had to rely on getting him the ball as much. But today, he's seen a lot of the ball and there was a lot of bright stuff from him. Thanks, Dan. Let's move on to another one then. Here on hashtag Ask Danny, this one. Uh, this is a follower of the beat. Uh, it says, uh, what do you think of our current style of play? He's watching from Denmark. Hello to you. Yeah, Denmark this time. Yeah, hello. Um, no, you, he's right. I'm guessing he's asking because he can see it. And I think the majority of the fans are seeing it as well. I think... Um, we're having the majority of playing games. I don't think we did today. Second half, you know, was, wasn't as good. Um, sometimes you, you're not always going to dominate teams, especially going away from home. Uh, I certainly would have expected Fleetwood to have a, a spell in the game, and they did late on. Uh, but yeah, throughout the, the course of the season so far, yes, we're still early days, but you can see the signs are there. Uh, the style that the manager and the, and the co coaches are looking for us to play this season is different to last year. And obviously personnel affects that as well. I think we've... Perhaps got a little bit more energy in the team, if we're honest. You know, but I think with Dan Neal in there, as soon as he's receiving the ball, um, Luke 09, whoever's in the middle of the park, Embleton, the first thought is once I'm receiving it, I'm on the half turn and I'm looking at driving, I'm looking at threading those balls. And then you've got Ross Stewart. I've mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. He's a different player to Charlie White. You know, Charlie will back to goal, want the ball into feet, get it out wide and then look at getting in the box. Whereas Ross is, is happy to do that side of it. He can handle himself in the air. But at the same time, he's always looking on that on that shoulder, isn't he? Getting in behind the centre halves. We've seen him win penalties this season at Wigan, prime example at home. Hearts in pre season, looking in behind, and it's a nightmare for centre halves. You know, I, I was there as a centre half, as a left back. You're happy when your man's in front of you. You can see ball and man. Um, when Ross is in behind you on the shoulder, and you're not sure where he is, it becomes difficult. Then you're looking at the ball, but you're trying to be aware of where your man is. So he, he brings that something different for us as well up top. And I think as well, we've got a little bit of strength on the, on the bench as well. You know, Pritchard didn't get on today, but he's similar to Embleton. You know, he's, he's in the pocket. He's busy trying to get on the ball. Um, Broadhead didn't see a lot of him today because when he came on, they had a lot of the ball. Yeah. So it was difficult for him to get into the game today. Um, but I think there's the signs are there certainly for us. And it's a diff and it's an enjoyable watch at the minute. I think yeah. we're, we're obviously doing the commentary, but I'm enjoying watching it. Mm -hmm. I'm, seeing, I'm seeing patterns of play. I'm seeing little avenues, those little threaded balls which are there now, which perhaps weren't last season. And I'm sure the fans at home are seeing that as well and in the stadium. Yep. OK, then, let's see the next one, please. Uh, Sunderland AFC fans view has said, uh, uh, how does Alves force his way into this team? Will West Ham be happy with him sitting in League One as a fourth-choice centre-back, getting no experience for first-team football? Uh, it's more of a general question about the loan system there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, it's a good question as well. And something we have touched on previously in the fact that we've been doing well. So as a player, you can't go in, knock on the manager's door and gaffer what's happening, why aren't I getting game time? I said before, he'll flick the league table on and say, because we're sat top of the table and the lads who are out there are doing the business for me at the minute. You have to bide your time, you have to train hard and when the opportunity comes along, you have to try and take it. Um, same for Alves. Uh, Huggins coming in has got the same. Broadhead, these lads are coming in from, from Premier League teams, uh, but they're having to bide their time and it's, it's difficult for them. Pritchard as well. Yeah, he was injured at the start of the season. I think he had COVID as well, getting up to match speed, but Embleton's been in there doing well for us. So you can't go and complain. 
Um, now, whether he's saying the lads who are on loan from Premier League clubs are going to be happy with it, that's maybe something they'll weigh up in, in January, maybe. But if he's on a season loan, then he might not be able to go back. But if, they, if it comes January and they're, they're looking at it and thinking, well, he's only had three games and maybe a couple in the Papa John's or whatever, and they're, they're not happy, then that's something that has to be discussed between our club and, and their parent clubs. But We have seen them have minutes this afternoon, for example, yeah. and it's going to be, you know, as the season goes on, there's going to be more requirements for more bodies, isn't there? There is, yeah. Well, Tuesday night, prime example, I'd imagine there'll be maybe eight, eight changes or so. All those lads on the bench will probably get a game time. Aidan O'Brien, we, we discussed it as well. He, he, he wouldn't have been happy that he's not getting starts, but got his run out against Blackpool, scored a hat-trick. There was rumours that he was meant to be looking to go on loan. That didn't happen. So he's got to knuckle down and, and try and force his way into the team. And he's not even involved today, but will more than likely start on Tuesday night. So he's, he's got to keep on training hard, putting the... Putting the putting the shift in. You can go out one or one or two ways as a player. You know, I've, I've seen lads do it and you're out there on the training pitch, uh, in the training ground. If you're not getting game time, although the lads are doing well, and yes, it's a team game, you, you almost have to look after yourself as an individual. Some lads mope about the place. They're not happy. They're getting the game time. They didn't go out there and put the effort in training. So that's going to be noted by Lee Johnson and the coaching staff. Whereas the other way, I look at it, the team are doing well. You should be in good spirits around the training ground and you've got to just be fit and ready because you don't know when you're going to get that opportunity and obviously as he says there you know Alves is fourth choice at the minute yes it looks that way but he's got to be patient you know Flanagan's gone down injured he's bumped up the queue Bailey's come in today done reasonably well obviously he's involved in that incident at the end of the game um, but that's something Lee Johnson's weighing up and the coaching staff these, they're seeing these boys day in day out in training we only get to see them for 90 minutes on a match day um, so it's how these lads are performing at the training ground as well OK, let's move on to what I think might be the final one from Tom. It says, is it worrying that we haven't demolished a team yet? Uh, I wouldn't say worrying. I think the signs have been there. Um, what worries me more is, that I said before the game, that's the disappointment from last week is we, didn't take, we could have scored five or six last week and you couldn't have argued about it. That's the disappointment is we're always letting the door open for teams to come back into the game where... There's only before today that was only the uh, Wiccan game where we've been a goal in front. Mm -hmm. All the other games we've had that one goal lead and we've been edgy. The manager obviously bringing a defender on to try and see the game out. And I know some fans have, have obviously questioned that. It, that's a catch-22. You, you, you bring a defender on to try and show the game up, see it through, but you, you're giving a yard to the opposition. You know, you're taking an attacker off or a midfielder and they can carry the ball forward and shell balls into the box, as we've seen. Um, but I think it's coming. I think we're creating opportunities and I think... We need to start worrying where we're in games and we're scraping through, maybe only having one, one or two opportunities. Um, do we only take one of them? And that, that, that hasn't come to me yet. I'm not worrying about that. I think even today, you know, we've, we look like we can hurt teams, uh, whether it's playing through teams, getting balls out wide and fizzing balls across the box. So we do look like we've got different avenues in scoring goals. Uh, Winchester's chipped in with a couple. Dan Neal, you know, obviously Ross has got five. Um, I know I'm missing. Embleton's got two. So we go back to last season, we're not reliant on Charlie White, your main striker, scoring all the goals. And then you've got a massive gulf going back to Grant Ledbetter, I think with six or seven and four or five penalties in there. We need these lads to be getting eights and nines from midfield. Uh, Lyndon Gucci's, Aidan McGeady's chipping in. You know, McGeady's obviously got two as well from penalties. Um, so it's a combination of scoring goals from different areas. And I'm sure this... Uh, this uh, demolishing of a side is going to come, which, uh, which Tom's talking about. Good. All positive. Thanks, Danny. I will end things there, I think. Thanks for watching SAFC Live this afternoon. So, Sunderland are back in action on Tuesday evening at 7.45 in the EFL Cup. We aren't covering that game here on SAFC Live, but we will be covering the game against Bolton here at the Stadium of Light on Saturday. That's Saturday the 25th. 3pm kickoff, so we'll be on air from 2.30 at the Stadium of Light. So thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you next time.